Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be making an autumn kind of soap today because fall is quickly approaching. And I got the idea because I asked on my Vibrant Soap Facebook page, and you can tune in anytime you like, um, for some suggestions on what my next soap would be. Um, had a lot of suggestions. I had some beach themed soap, which I want to do, and some other great suggestions, and I want to do that too. But I thought, yeah, fall is coming really quickly, so I'm going to make a fall soap. I'm going to call it Vibrant Autumn. And I'm also going to use a Taiwan swirl again. And I have a short uh, color tutorial for you as well. I also want to take this time to say thank you very much for tuning in and um, subscribing to my channel. And it is a bit important for me to do that because it's nice to just kind of see that number of subscriptions grow. So if you would just do that for me and a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And the other thing I want to say, um, and this happened on Instagram because I also have a Vibrant Soap Instagram account. Um, I got this nice note from someone that said, you know, thank you very much because I started soaping because of you. And that just kind of made me feel really good too. So uh, I kind of live for the comments. I also want to say that if you get inspired to make any of these soaps that you see any of the video uh, soapers do, I want you to say to yourself that, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to have a lot of fun. If I make a few mistakes, it's okay. Uh, I don't want you make any mistakes as far as the safety part. I want you to be safe from the lie. There's a lot of how to do anything out there on YouTube. I just want to say be kind to yourself because, you know, we make it look easy because we've done it a lot. But be kind to yourself. When I was just starting out, I was following these soapers that were doing these beautiful soaps. And I kind of allowed myself to make mistakes, to learn, make small batches so that it's not a lot of waste of materials. Have fun with it, that's all I have to say. So let's get started with the color tutorial first and then we'll get into the making and cutting of the soap. Okay, so I've already put on my paper um, the basic color scheme that I'm gonna use with this and I've also lined them up in terms of their value, going from the darker value all the way to the light. And if you don't know what I mean by that, let me show you that in black and white first and you'll see how it goes from dark to less dark all the way into the lightest color here. Uh, let's get the color back in there and I'm going to show you that I think this is for me a little bit just too um, obvious that they're just bright pure colors they look beautiful um, they are fall colors um, but I'm going to alter them just to make it a little bit more um, soft and not so stark a little uh, more sophisticated so I'm going to add a little white to my black to make it more of a charcoal color, still um, black, but with a little bit of white in that. And what I think uh, I'm doing there is um, softening it up a bit and also preventing myself from using more uh, charcoal because I don't want any um, bleeding with that black. When it's with the bright colors, it's going to appear to be a black um, because it's the darkest color in that group. And the red, I am going to have more of a, um, a deep pink. So I'm going to soften that a little bit. And these are still fall-like colors. It's just it's not quite as out of the tube um, as what I already have on the paper there. The orange... I'm going to put a little bit, I don't like brown, we stay away from brown, but I added just a little bit of brown to the concept in my head to um, take away some of that color intensity, because I don't want it to look cartoony, I want it to represent the fall colors. And the yellow is also um, a little bit altered. I used a little bit of uh, brown, or I'm going to use a little bit of brown in my watercolor version here to get more of a, a yellow ochre. And I think that looks a little bit more sophisticated. And you can let me know in the comments what you have to say about um, do you want it in your face bright, or do you want it uh, dulled down a little bit, um, just because uh, this is a little bright. Um, I asked that in a kind of biased way, but I really want to hear what you think. Should you just go for the brightest colors, or can you alter them a little bit um, 
depending on the fragrance. So let me show you the making of this soap now. Okay, so I'm gonna blend my oils, milk, sodium lactate, one more time really well before I add the lye. Things are gonna be moving pretty quickly here, so I just wanna show you what I'm gonna do with my colors. Before I do them, I put a mark on my container so I know where to pour them because the dividers are not even. I need a whole lot more color on the two sides. And I learned by experience that um, I'll be able to have more level top if I have different amounts of soap to compensate for that. Okay, so let's add the lye. Yeah, I can tell that's emulsified. Let's get them poured in the color. Starting with my lightest color first. Let's get the scent in at the same time. I think these are nice fall colors. That's what people wanted on my soap page on Facebook. That's a nice dark gray, but it'll appear as black next to the pure colors. So I don't have to overdo that. Start off by pouring a little of each of these. And I'm going in the order of color value, lightest to darkest. I did that with my Montego soap too, so if you want to take a look at that soap, the colors really um, flow together nicely if you do it by value. And I think that the way I divided up the colors according to how big these slots are, was just about perfect, so. I may as well go for a pretty, almost overflowing pour, because when I take the dividers out, the soap level will drop. And if you're gonna do this Taiwan swirl, you want a lot of bang for the buck, so um, you want to get as many soap bars out of it as you can. I'm trying to conserve on how many things I have to wash also. So what I'm going to do is put all the leftover soap in here and then pour it into another mold that I have that looks like a fall leaf. And I think that swirl in those molds are going to look really nice. And then I don't waste any soap. No big plan on how I swirl this. I'll just stick it all in the pot and give it a little bit of a stir. And I'm glad I have mainly yellow so it'll keep the soap nice and bright. If you're a soaper, one question I have is, how do you conserve and make the most of your batter? Do you have little hints on how you use every bit of it? I think that would be a nice thing to know. 
I tend to scrape as much as I can. I always have my extra molds available. The other thing I'm going to do is scrape the leftover soap on these dividers into the same bowl. I don't want to scrape it into the mold where I'm making my main batch because I don't want to disturb the design on the top. But there's a lot of soap that collects on these, so you want to make sure you use as much as you can. It's very slippery. You're wearing gloves, it's like, uh, takes all your dexterity to do this sometimes. You also want to make sure that you pull these dividers out straight up so that it doesn't destroy your creation. And it's really hard to do because of the guides on the side of the mold. By guides, I mean what I'm pulling out right now. You see the little grooves there. Nice fall colors there. Okay, I'm gonna get back to this. Go all the way down. Alright, and there's the top, and I'll be able to cut mm, quite a few bars out of this, but I'm going to cut them horizontally so that I can maintain the same design through all the bars. And let's get to that right now. But let's first do this, and that around a little bit. And I have some pumpkins in here too which I'll do last. I want to make sure I have my leaves filled first. Well, I think I'll have just enough for the leaves. Put that aside. Take a look at this one more time before we do the cut. So as you can see I made a template so that I can cut this soap evenly. I'm just going to mark it first. And the smell is very nostalgic. It reminds me when it reminds me of when um, I went out with my family to the mountains, to our apple picking areas in California, and the markets there smell of flowers and apples and the oak barrels that they keep the fruit in, and those are the notes of this fragrance called lavender apples and oak from Rustic Essentials. So I'm going to cut down on the markings that I made. And that's kind of cool from the side. cutting with this knife. I used to exclusively cut with it before I got my soap cutter. Okay, 
Now it's got more of a, a glassy cut when I use the knife too. Okay, so now I've got to figure out how many bars I can get out of this. Just doing some measuring. I think these are going to be thick bars. And they're going to be really thick. I think I'm going to cut this. They're just going to be really thick bars. Not quite enough to make three bars out of it. So there it is. There's this end. I'm not going to plane that because I like the texture on the top one. I think these are going to be thinner bars. It's just too heavy a bar. It's not very doesn't feel good in the hand that big. That's a nicer size bar. But I will probably price these bars a little less than my usual bars since they are thinner. I'll cut this one into thirds. There's the bottom. I think I'll cut this this way. Make some sample size ones. Anyway, showing a variety of ways that these can be cut. And my last cut. I'm going to weigh these and see how they compare to my regular bars because they feel pretty heavy and they are, I think they've got more length and width to them. Yeah, the ones that I cut in thirds are actually heavier than my usual bars, but the ones that I cut into fourths. And of course these little smaller bars are going to weigh a little bit less. So I might cut these a little smaller to use as samples. And I wish you guys could smell these. They're kind of cool. It really does remind me of an apple festival. 
So I'll clean these up and show you what they look like. And thanks for watching. And I'm going to include some other fall-like soaps on the end of this video. I'll put some windows up to let you find those. And thanks for subscribing. Give me a thumbs up for this. I really work hard on um, editing these for you. And sure would like to get a few more subscribers. So thank you for all that. And we'll see you real soon with the next one. So I'll show you all these varieties of um, ways the soap looks when you cut them differently. There's the top with the texture. And I like that kind of texture. Then if you cut it, you get a cleaner version of that. Here's the two different ways together in the same picture. Of course, I have that extra batter that I put in the leaf mold. And this is the end cut that ended up looking pretty interesting too. So we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.